In this video, we're going to do another example of calculating crystal field stabilization energy um, given this coordination complex right here, which is going to be hexaamine molybdenum 2. All right, so what was our first step in all of this? All right, and again, I do want to give credit where credit is due. I'm going to continue to do that. This flow chart is, was created by Dr. Jason Smee from the University of Texas at Tyler. It's very useful for determining crystal field stabilization energy, or it's at least a part of that. All right, the first step is to calculate the metal's charge, or its oxidation state. So what I will always do is, is find the charge of the overall complex, which is positive 2, and set that equal to the sum of the individual charges. Well, there's an amine here, or NH3, that has a charge of 0, and there's six of them, plus the charge of molybdenum. So hopefully you can see that goes to 0, so that molybdenum is in the 2 plus oxidation state, or we can write that as molybdenum. 2 plus. All right. Now, the second step, I need to calculate how many d electrons, number of d electrons that are in molybdenum 2 plus. I'm going to go to the periodic table now. All right. So, where is molybdenum? Here it is, number 42 on the periodic table. It is going to be, let's go back, molybdenum is 2 plus, so it's going to lose two electrons. It's going to preferentially lose the 5s2 first. Okay, so molybdenum is going to lose two electrons. It's going to preferentially lose the 5s2 first, which means this one will be gone, this one will be gone, and it will be left with 4d electrons, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So now I can say that molybdenum is going to have 4d electrons. All right, now I can go to this flow chart. I need to calculate whether it is low spin or high spin. All right, does the ion have four to seven d electrons? Yes, it has four, that's in that range, so I go to yes. I need to ask myself, is it a first row transition metal? Well, hopefully you see that molybdenum is in the second row. So the answer is no, it's not first row, so automatically low spin. Some of these are actually, some of these can truncate a lot, a lot more quickly. This is one of them. I know automatically this is low spin, all right? Now I need to set up my crystal field uh, diagram. So at the bottom, I have my T2G d orbitals. At the top, because it's octahedral, I have my E sub g d orbitals. Um, I'm also going to, I'm going to indicate, just do it in orange, I'm going to indicate my degenerate energy. This is my degenerate energy. Uh, I remember that from E sub G to the degenerate energy, this is 3 fifths delta octahedral. And then down here, from the degenerate energy to T2G, this is 2 fifths delta octahedral. Okay, and this is low spin. So what does low spin mean? Low spin means there's a high electro or a, or a large electrostatic field. So that means there is a lot of, you could think of it, repulsion between these orbitals. So there's more splitting, so I can't just fill three in here and then go and fill the next one up here. In other words, the way I like to think of it is if it's low spin, there's four electrons, one, two, three. If it's low spin, I gotta stay low. Remember if it was high spin, I fill three in and then I can come up high. If it's low spin, I fill them in here and then I gotta stay low and put the fourth one right here, all right? Now, if you go back to the last video where we looked at that iron complex, that was high spin. And I mentioned that in high spin complexes, you never worry about pairing energy. Well, now we're doing low spin, so we do worry about pairing energy. Pairing energy is designated by the symbol P sometimes. All right. So now what I want to do is now that I have this, this uh, diagram, I need to calculate I need to calculate the crystal field stabilization energy. All right, so the way I do that is I look at the T2G first. T2G I see is 2 fifths delta octahedral and I multiply that by the number of electrons in that, um, in that uh, set of orbitals and that's four electrons, right? And then I subtract off of it 3 fifths delta octahedral times the number of electrons in the E sub G orbitals that's zero, so that whole thing is zero. But then what I have to do is I have a cost. 
I have to subtract off the pairing energy. So what is pairing energy? All right, so to explain that, I need to do one thing. Let me assume for one second that all these d orbitals are degenerate, all right? Let me fill in these electrons like this, because there's four of them. One, two, three, four. Here's what I do. In the degenerate case, how many orbitals have paired electrons? Zero. In the split case, once you have crystal field splitting, how many orbitals have paired electrons? One. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the difference in the number of orbitals that have paired electrons in the split case and subtract that from the number of orbitals that have paired electrons in the degenerate case, which is zero, and that's obviously one. Okay, that's the difference. So that means off of this set of calculations right here, I have to subtract one p. If this difference were two, which it could be in some cases when you have d5, um, d5 low spin, this would have two orbitals that have paired, this would have zero, so two minus zero is two, so you'd have to subtract two p, okay? But since this one has only one orbital that has paired electrons, and in the degenerate there's none, one minus zero is one, so I have to subtract a one p. And so this would be overall, and I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll simplify this in a minute, but this is going to be your overall expression for calculating crystal field stabilization energy for the low spin case. But what exactly is the pairing energy? Here, you didn't have any electrons that are paired up in any orbitals in the degenerate case. So whenever you do splitting in this low field situation, you have pairing. And it turns out that going from this to this, there is an energy cost. And that energy cost is called the pairing energy. So when you have low spin, you absolutely, absolutely have to make sure to draw this little diagram right there. Because you need to compare how many orbitals have paired electrons here in the degenerate case to how many you had when you did this uh, crystal field splitting diagram, okay? So in summary, let me go ahead and do this. Our crystal field stabilization energy, if I come back up here, 2 fifths times 4, this is going to be 8 fifths delta octahedral and then minus pairing energy. And that is my, that is my answer for the crystal field stabilization energy of A. And let me just make sure I, I have this, hold on. It is going to be for a low spin D4 metal. All right, all right, so thank you for watching this video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. We're gonna do some more examples in the next few videos. Thank you very much.